We are honored to have with us today Werner Herzog, who is still garnering well-deserved praise for his 2005 documentary, Grizzly Man, which recently was released on DVD, and whose body of work will continue to be lauded by fans for generations to come. Werner, it's truly an honor to have you on our show. Um, last year, uh, Grizzly Man was released. It did well financially. It was very well reviewed. And there's a lot of uh, press that came out uh, wondering why it was not nominated for an Academy Award. Uh, does this even register with you? Uh, it does, but it doesn't give me sleepless nights. Um, the Academy probably only knows why it was not uh, even included in the pool from which you could draw a nomination. So it's sometimes mysterious and uh, it, it is as it is. And, and uh, what could I ask more than having uh, lots of enthusiastic audiences? Right. The film doing well, um, being very well accepted by critics, so it couldn't get better. Let's talk about your your documentary filmmaking, which to me is, I, I've never seen anything like your documentaries. You, can you explain the, the, the idea of ecstatic truth? I think uh, at the moment there's a major tectonic shift going on. We have uh, virtual reality in the internet, we have reality TV, we have got uh, digital effects, we got Photoshop, we got ev everything is, is pointing towards a redefinition of, of reality. We have to start uh, seeing and, and working and explaining and articulating reality in movies in a different way. Cinema Verite was the answer of the 60s. Mm -hmm. Today is something else out there and I've always said, sure, uh, reality has to be seen in a new way, but it's, that is not so much the interesting part of it. The interesting side of it is where is truth in all this? Cinema Verite is the accountant's truth, mm. as I keep saying. I, I have insulted many with that, but <clears throat> I've always been after what I call an ecstatic truth, an ecstasy of truth. And so you would say that with all the new technology, truth has not changed, but there's, now that there's different methods to get to it, they should be employed to reach that, that ecstatic truth? And facts do not create truth. Facts create norms, but they do not create an illumination. Do you think uh, people who are seeking to make documentaries today yeah. are somehow limiting themselves by going back to the ideas of cinema verite and limiting themselves by those confines? They will find their way themselves, but there has to be a, a major shift in dealing with reality. Mm. It's as simple as that. And, and in my documentaries, they are always very close to feature films. Um, and I sometimes stage and direct and rehearse and repeat like in a feature film. And, and the feature films uh, that I made have a, some sort of a common borderline with documentaries anyway. When you look at Fitzcarraldo, uh, it's a film where I hoisted a, a steamboat over a mountain a couple of hundred tons heavy. Uh, and I keep saying this is my best documentary. Do you think now, in 2006, you could go to a big studio here in town and pitch Fitzcarraldo and say we're not going to use CGI, we're not going to use any, any computer image, we're really going to pull a damn boat over a mountain? Uh, it wouldn't fly. You wouldn't do it. Uh, you see, sometimes there are things, there are projects out there that you do not solve with uh, cash money and with a big studio in, uh, backing you up. You do not move mountains with money. You move mountains with faith. Mm. That being said, what does that say to you about Hollywood, like the state of Hollywood now? Uh, I think it hasn't, it hasn't changed very much because uh, Hollywood, of course, is mainstream and it has certain rituals, rules, technicalities, forms of organizations. The project simply doesn't fit into it. It doesn't fit into it because nobody would dare to move a ship over a mountain. Right. So it, uh, it doesn't say much against Hollywood because Hollywood has always been capable of, of doing magnificent stuff. Um, I just uh, remind you of all the great films by El Elia Kazan or Fred Astaire and Griffith and uh, you just name it. It's, uh, 
it's wonderful to see how the dreams of the world are somehow organized and manufactured here. Mm. This well, is one of the reasons why I like to, to be in Los Angeles. Not only for the, for the collective dreams, it's all very important trends are coming from here. It's hard we have to, to see the stupidities as yeah, well. I mean, the pyramid energy, vitamin eating, surfing, uh, breast implants, uh, stretch limos. Yeah, it's hard uh, for me you, to get around just, that part of it. You have to get around, just, <laughs> yeah, now you, you have to ignore it and, and go for the substance. And uh, Los Angeles is the city with the most substance here in the United States, period. Wow. I, I've never really thought that about this, about this town. Uh, this interview is uh, somewhat successful in that you uh, were not shot. Uh, so th there, uh, there have been moments where it didn't go all that well for you on the interview front. Uh, tell us that story, if you would. Well, during a BBC interview, I was shot on camera while I was out uh, near Lookout Mountain. And some, it was some sort of a equivalent to road rage. And I was shot and I had a, a, a leather jacket and a catalogue inside. And it was not such a serious bullet anyway. It was probably only a small caliber rifle or a high powered air rifle. So I was only slightly wounded and I didn't even realize what had happened. I thought the camera had exploded and something had hit and burnt me. And I only realized when I see the, the sound man ducking and hitting the ground and then part of the crew fled. Was anyone ever apprehended? Uh, no, I didn't want to have police called because when you report to police you have been shot at by a man with a rifle, they send out a helicopter and a SWAT team. It, they would have overreacted. And I, I thought uh, this was not a serious bullet. This is part of the folklore out of here. This is something we can laugh about it later on, and we laughed a lot. <laughs> and <laughs> and I have been, I've been shot, I've been shot at uh, with much more serious bullets before in my life. And what I'm trying to say, it's it's something very exhilarating for a man to be shot at, at with little success. Yes, uh, that was incredible. You're incredible. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very Thank much, you sir. Thank you for having me.